Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game that was played on March 9th, 1957. This is the first of two games from an exhibition match played between these two. On the white end, the doctor, Max Irvay. He studied mathematics at the University of Amsterdam, taught mathematics, and earned his doctorate in the subject in 1926. Less than a decade later, he would become the fifth world champion. His opponent, the young, highly talented Bobby Fischer. This was a surprise to me, but yeah, March 9th, 1957 was when Fischer turned 14. And this exhibition match was after that famous game of the century. And if you're wondering what type of influence this mini exhibition match against a, the fifth world champion has on a young mind, well, Fischer later that year in 1957 would become the youngest U.S. champion ever. So, surprising to see how quickly things go south in this particular game, especially when you consider the type of opening we're working with, a Queen's Gambit declined exchange variation. Bishop g5 is noted as the positional line. Getting some more moves in here, Bishop b4, e3, and a question to the bishop. The pin is maintained. One other note you may find interesting, March 9th, 1957 was when Game 3 of the World Chess Championship took place. Smyslov, the challenger, versus the champ, Bodvinik. That was the match Smyslov wrestled the crown away from Bodvinik. Anyhow, from here, Fischer now strikes at white center and creates a path for the queen to put some pressure on the c3 point. Bishop d3, this is a nice diagonal. Watching over e4, a nice improving move by the knight at some stage. Once the pin is resolved, an additional reason to go to d3, well, h6 has been played, which means g6 is a little bit weak. Not a hole, but weakened, and so why not stare at that point? From here, some pressure on white center. And this pressure on white's queen knight, is having an influence on white's king knight now. Knight e2. There's two ways you could go ahead and support d4. Knight e2 in the game. A couple of reasons behind this. One, you stay clear of any annoying pin that could be broken with f3. And another, well, you're supporting c3. So as an example, if the knight goes to f3, it's not there securing c3. White could maybe feel some pressure like this with this continuation. C4, Queen, A5 could be a little bit uncomfortable coping with the pressure on C3. So in the game, it's Knight E2. Just connecting Knights. Capture on D4. And I like the decision here to capture with the E pawn. If you stare at a computer evaluation, they'll say, you know, go ahead, flip a coin. It doesn't matter evaluation around the same. But I like the decision to take with the pawn. Create a ram structure. And the other reason I like it is because white has now the potential to maybe put additional pressure on d5, or d5 can be a sore spot in black's camp. Why do I say this? Well, with the knight on e2, it's not long off from coordinating well with the other knight. Converging on d5, and d5, you know, this knight on f6 is not the most reliable defender. With this pressure on the knight, the bishop's ready to knock out not just one, but two key defenders of this point. Continuing, both kings are tucked away. Bishop e6, move 11. This is a, a tiny step in the wrong direction. Bishop e6, computer suggests, go ahead, break the pin with bishop e7. Um, this is a move Fisher plays in the game, but just one move later. What is the issue with bishop to e6? It's not some losing move, but the issue is related to, well, it's accessible to multiple white pieces, not only the knight, but also the rook. When you look at what white's next plan is here, bishop c2, this starts to be a problem having the bishop on e6. Bishop c2 is preparing a very nice battery where the queen is the leader and checkmate is just a moment away. 
you know, these typical eliminate the defenders, sweep into h7 stuff. Bishop on e6, knight f4, this can be a big problem. Staring at the weak square, g6, pressure on e6. Okay. In the game, bishop e7, knight f4, and queen to b6. Now, this last move by Fisher is looking to put some pressure on d4, b2, but this is a losing move. There's no recovering after black's 13th move here. A better move is to secure the e6 square. Queen to d7 is one of the suggestions by the engine. Another is to maybe move the bishop to g4. In this game, however, it's queen to b6. And so this becomes a big problem. And I have a pop quiz for you. What did the doctor play next? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, here we go. Winning continuation, basically. There's a lot of forced moves here. First, we take out the knight. Eliminate the knight, and then go queen d3. Move order is especially important. If you were excited about playing this first, with the threat of taking here, and then mate, the timing is off because of knight b4. Black is there first, eliminating this strong light square bishop. So first, in the game, you take the knight, only then play to d3, and how do you defend against queen here? Because this bishop is on e6, the move g6 is not a good move, because this pawn is now overloaded. White would be able to take the bishop, and then crash through. White is winning. So, black has to prepare to run. Black moves the rook and is prepared to simply bolt to f8. First, rook a to e1, knight b4, queen h7 check, king f8, and a very nice move here, a3. What's the, what's the idea here? You're chasing away the knight from fulfilling a very important role. In the game, it's knight takes bishop. One more pop quiz. We're just two moves out from this one. And, well, what did the doctor play next? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. Here we go. Knight c takes d5. It seems like this is defended enough, but it is not. What's the issue? Well, the king is close to being mated. If the king doesn't have these two squares, Queen h8 is mate. So if bishop takes knight here, game over. And if rook takes knight, the move played in the game, we now take the rook. So we're threatening mate now that this square is covered. And the queen is under fire. If you take the knight, queen h8 mate. And what else is black to do? The queen is under fire. And if the queen moves, once more, queen h8 is mate. After knight takes d5 here, Fisher resigns. There's just no way forward. The computer suggests g6. Just take the queen. And you're winning from here. You can smash through, take that bishop, and mop. Mop up everything. I think you're going to win some more soon enough. So this was one minor issue. That earlier decision to put the bishop on e6 in general, placing a piece or a minor piece on a half open file or an open file in this case, you're certainly going to be subjected to some pressure. These kind of exchange sacrifices are present, and, you know, well, in this particular case, knight e2 made the bishop e6 move, you know, not such a good idea. It's too accessible to not only the major pieces, but the knight as well. So just a 20 mover. The doctor was not uh, a fan of gifting anything to Fisher in this game. But uh, anyhow, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.